What's up, YouTube? A bunch of people are hitting me up saying they want to see the more day-to-day -day content with cars. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. Um, usually this is stuff that I post on my Instagram that I don't make videos about. But anyway, my friend brought over his F80 M3. It's Azurite on Silverstone. Pretty cool spec. Um, anyway, we're doing like the bread and butter. So he has a diffuser going on. We got the KW Haas kit. We have SPL tow arms, SSR intakes, uh, exhaust gaskets, and then wheel spacers. And then also outside, we have an active mid pipe. So I'm gonna show you guys that as well. Let me just get into it. All right, so now that we took the wheel off, we can start working underneath. So what we're gonna do here, if this could focus, we're gonna take off the brake pad wear sensor. Um, we're also gonna unclip this. We're gonna take this off the strut itself. You're also gonna take off this nut, which is the sway bar end link. And then this final bolt on the strut assembly itself will come off. And I'll show you guys what to do after that. I'm also just throwing this clip in. This is actually the driver's side of the car, but I wanna make it known that there is a headlight level sensor that you will need to disconnect. So that's the only difference between the two. Um, you will take a nine millimeter and a 10 millimeter, and this bolt basically just comes off the arm itself. Uh, I disconnect it from the arm and not the sensor, like where I'm pointing to now. So just keep that in mind. You definitely don't want to break these. Um, they're not expensive if you do. It's not a huge deal because you could access it. But just keep that in mind. This will need to be disconnected. Keep in mind that the bolt on the sway bar end link is a pass-through bolt. So just zipping this off won't work. You have to put a box end wrench on it or whatever wrench. Then you're gonna take a T30 on an extension. Basically put it in here and you're actually gonna tighten it. So it's gonna loosen the inner portion. And as you're holding a nut, it'll spin right off and then you just take it off instead of damaging the, the uh, end link itself. Now, once you have this bolt all the way loose, this comes off and you just wanna jack the bottom of the arm with whatever you have. And you'll find that sweet spot where it just pulls out as you can see right here. So instead of just fighting it, it's gonna bind if you don't jack up the bottom of the strut or the arm. And then you just find that sweet spot that pops right out and then attach this bolt back so you don't lose it. I just went ahead and popped the hood. So basically, if you guys don't know, you have to take off the strut bar. So this just runs all the way across. It's like a boomerang, a couple bolts in the front, a couple bolts in the back. And then this is a bunch of plastic clips. So we're just looking to get to the strut tower top. If you don't know how to do this, there's plenty of videos. I'm not really gonna go through it, but I'm just gonna take it off and get to the strut. Now that we have the bottom taken care of, we're gonna take a look at the top. So for this, you're gonna need a special tool. This is a pass-through 18 millimeter. So that's gonna go on top of the strut nut. I also like to use one of these bent box ends and you're just gonna grab a 10 and hold the top of the strut. So as you're turning this, the strut body doesn't move and that's how you take this off. So you will need to special order this. Not really a big deal, but go ahead and get it off Amazon. They're pretty cheap or you could get good ones. You know, there's different types, but this is the type that I use. With the strut tower bolts out, you can basically just pull it out the bottom so you can fish it out. It's not gonna hit anything. You don't have to worry about it. I usually put a pad here. It's actually not on the pad. It looks like it is, but it's not. Um, just so it doesn't fall. It's never gonna fall because you're gonna have your hands on it, but just a safety precaution because I don't know your mechanical background. So for the back of the strut, you will need a strut tool spreader. So it's something like this. So as you tighten it, it's an oval shape and it widens as you tighten it. So you basically half turn it or a quarter turn it and it spreads this and then you can pop this out. Bringing you guys over here. So the strut itself is out. And what I did is I took a Sharpie and traced the outline of the stock strut collar. And the reason why you do that is because you're gonna be replacing this. And these are directional. So as you can see, this one is for the right side on the KWs. There's also a left side, so don't get it confused. You wanna match it up perfectly. As you can see, this is concave. So you wanna match up this side. So this is gonna be the right side of the car. And this is gonna be the right side collar. This is gonna be pressed off. And as you can see, I made a mark in the middle of this because you wanna line it up to the original specifications on the strut itself. Now KW does provide info on this and they also have measurements. So once you press the collar, you're gonna take the measurement from the top of the collar where it meets the strut itself. I just wanna go ahead and throw these pictures in for better reference. So the picture on the left, what you're looking at is there's a bevel on the shock body itself. You wanna measure from that edge to the bottom of your new sway bar end link, and that should be 85 millimeters plus or minus two. And then the picture on the right is gonna show the top of the threads on the new collar to the top of the shock body itself and that needs to be 55 millimeters plus or minus two. 
as you can see, I got the collar pressed in. I also inserted the sensor back into the strut housing. Um, I did put blue Loctite on this bolt because that's what it comes with from factory. So I just reapplied that. Also, what I see, I just want to throw this in here because a lot of people don't cover it. Um, I see a bunch of these cars left with this piece off. So you can do it. Um, I don't know if it degrades the strut over time or what the situation is. But basically, KW recommends that you put it back in. What they fail to mention is that this has a lip on it so that the new spring doesn't fit over this. So what I do is I basically take a pair of dykes or whatever you want and just cut the plastic all the way around. So just be nice and neat with it. It really doesn't matter. Like I said, a lot of people leave this off, but in their diagram, they insert it. So it's totally up to you. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this, put it back on, put the bump stop back on, put the spring on, and then put the dust boot on. And that'll be it. Now with the strut assembly back in the car, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the top. And I'm gonna to torque this nut to 25 foot pounds. As you can see, I have my torque wrench right here. And I'm gonna take the um, I'm gonna take a wrench and actually hold the strut top. But this only goes to 25 foot pounds. Do not use an impact on these. People ruin struts all the time. So let me go ahead and torque this for you guys. All right, so moving on to the back of the car, I usually save this for last because it's easier than the front. But basically at the top of the strut, you have three, I believe E10 or E12, I have to double check. Um, at the bottom of that, all the way at the bottom of the strut, as you can see on the right side, you have that rusted bolt. That's gonna be an 18. And then you have this camber bolt right here. So the bottom is your camber. And then this top one right here is actually your toe. So the camber bolt, we will take off as well. I like to take it off by this instead of the back of the swing arm. You could do either way. This car is getting an alignment, so it's not really a big deal. But I will make some paint marks on these. And also when you're taking them off, you never take off the head of the bolt. If you're going to zip it off, zip it off with the nut on the back side. Um, but basically the swing arm comes down and then the spring falls out. The strut will detach from the top. EDC thing will get unplugged. And that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and do that for you. All right, so as you can see, I've made paint marks. There's one on this side and two on this side because the orientation does matter. So instead of mixing it up, uh, keep in mind the bevel of the washer. So as you can see, it's rounded up top. So I'm gonna reinstall it in the same orientation. Um, this is just good because obviously you don't have an alignment rack at your house. So before you go to the alignment rack and get it dialed in, this is just going to get you close to what the OEM specs were. So it's going to be, you know, relatively straight down the road. All right. So once you have the nut loosened, obviously you take it off from the nut side. If you are zipping it off or if you're using a wrench or whatever, use this side and not the head of the bolt. So this comes off. As you can see, the washer is also orientated on the bolt. It has cutouts. So you take it off in the same direction. And I just want to mention that um, at this point, it might be a little bit difficult to get out. I use a, a rubber mallet as seen right here so basically i just tap this with a rubber mallet instead of mauling it with an actual like metal hammer um you just tap it out and it slides out that's pretty much it easy now with the bolt out you can see what i'm talking about this side has a built-in washer so this washer doesn't move on the head side of the bolt and then on this side you see grooves taken out so obviously this washer only goes in one orientation and then you have the nut so when you're taking it off you take off this side first that's super important these do snap um, on more modern cars. They don't snap as much, but stupid stuff happens when you do stupid stuff straight up. So anyway, take this out, like I said, and you're good to go. Now with both of the bottom bolts removed, we'll move on to the sensor. So this just squeezes, pulls down. This obviously pops out, pull this out of the way. And now we will lower it. So as you can see, the entire swing arm will lower itself. The strut is out from the bottom. And now we're gonna take a look at the top. We're gonna take these three bolts out. You gotta be careful when this drops. As you can see, this blue connector in here is your EDC connector. So you don't wanna snap that. Uh, I'll show you how to disconnect that in one second. All right, now that I cracked all the bolts loose, I'm just gonna go ahead and zip them out. So these are E12, not E10. All right, unfortunately my phone just died. So pardon me, I had to grab another phone. So the quality probably isn't as good. But as you can see, here's the connector up here. This will focus. 
I have the strut assembly out. It connects to there. This plastic piece on the top, you can just pop off with a screwdriver. So that just pops out and you'll see the EDC module on top of the strut. Um, taking this out is pretty self-explanatory. Once you get the three bolts off the top, you just wanna have a hand on it because you don't wanna put pressure on that sensor itself. That's what I was warning you about. It's pressed up against the, uh, the fender guard. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, what we're gonna do now is take the swing arm. As you can see, this all moves. So you push the swing arm down and you pop this spring out. This will also have to come out. So you could just take a screwdriver, um, like a flathead and just kind of pry off it. You don't want to pry against the body too much. You kind of just hit it down and it just pops right out. Um, unless they're super seized, which doesn't really happen that often. Now it's important to keep in mind the orientation of the strut. So I have the assembly right here. As you can see, the sensor is going to be on the right side for the driver. And at the top, the single bolt is going to go towards the front of the car. The two bolts are going to go on the rear of the car. So keep that in mind. You do have to take this off because we're replacing the bump stop and we're reusing the dust shield. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick right now. Let me just pop this off. Like I said, flathead screwdriver. Actually, you might be able to get it off by hand too. So the cap pops right off. As you can see, we have the EDC sensor on the top of the strut. So what you're going to do is squeeze both ends and it's just gonna pop off. Just be super careful because the pins are super small. You don't wanna mess this up. I'm gonna do it off camera, but essentially I'm just squeezing the two sides and pulling straight up. So let me do that for you. Now that we have that unplugged, we just move it out of the way. So you could take off this entire thing if you wanted to. I just usually leave it on because I have enough room, but you just flip this up. And now you are gonna need a thin wall. I believe it's a 12 point, as you can see in there. So a thin wall 12.18 socket, um, it has to be passed through because you also have to hold the top of the strut so it doesn't spin. If you use a gun on this, you know, the strut is going to be prone to leaking. So definitely don't do that. So now that we have the hat off, we can lay that over here. We will be working with this strut. So this is the assembly. This basically just slides straight off the top. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you do want to clean this. And this is all going to be the same. So nothing that you're touching down below like this stays. Obviously, the sensor stays. So I'm going to pop this off. This basically just pops in. And we're going to replace that with the KW one. This is what the strut's going to look like once you're done. So as you can see, put the nut back on, torqued it to spec. I also put on the EDC um, sensor itself. This will be plugged back into the car. You'll put the E12s, tighten these first, and then we'll pick up the swing arm and attach the bottom bolt. With both springs out, I just want to show you guys the difference. So the KW will be utilizing a helper spring. As you can see, the smaller one here. This is the stock setup. We aren't reusing any of this. And these are the differences between the bump stops. So you do have to use the KW. You can't use stock. This is going to be the spring perch. And we are going to put the dust boot back on. A good rule of thumb for this spring perch, this is adjustable. And just so you guys realize, these cars are pretty low from the factory in the rear itself. The front is super high but the rear sits pretty low as is. So I like to take the KW adjustable spanner and put it within the collar and the actual adjustable um, collar itself. And that should give you pretty good ride height. This is gonna go on the top and we're gonna slide it in the swing arm. Now, before you mate the spring to the uh, swing arm, you wanna get all this corrosion off. This is a Northeast car, so you're gonna experience some stuff like this. You want the spring to see as flush as possible. So as you can see, all that corrosion, I'm just gonna grind off with a wire wheel real quick before I actually put the spring assembly in. All right, so I have it all cleaned up. I went ahead and installed the rubber insulator and now I'm gonna install the helper spring. So as you can see, the numbers are legible. They're not upside down. I'm gonna install them like that with the intermediate collar. And then we are going to install the main spring that's gonna go on the top right here. As you can see, it hits, so I'm going to have to compress the swing arm off camera. Just push this down with your weight, and then you could slide it in, and you also put the perch on top. So let me show you guys what that looks like real quick. The main spring is seated in its correct location. As you can see, I did put the perch on top, so don't forget about that. I didn't show it in the last clip. So the perch, then you have the main spring, the intermediate collar, and then the helper spring. The helper spring will straighten out when you put the swing arm back in its location. But as you can see, I have both numbers legible so that you can read them and they're 180 degrees away from each other. So both numbers should be showing towards you. That's how I like to install them. You can install them in any orientation. Just keep the numbers with the numbers and make sure they're right side up and not upside down. Once you get the swing arm into place, 
it is important that you torque it at load. So basically, if you're on a lift, you want to use a pole jack or you want to lower it on ramps itself and torque it while the car is on the ground. Um, you can't torque it at fully extended because that's not going to work. It's going to deflect on the bushings. But anyway, the bolt to the left is going to be, I believe, 165 newton meters, which is like 121 foot pounds. And then the strut bolt on the right, the one that's a little bit more rusted, that's going to be 74 foot pounds. And like I said, torque these at load.